This presentation is a 30,000 foot view of what is results-based accountability or RBA and performance measures. This is originally presented by Karen Finn from Clear Impacts for the National Park Service. What do we mean by accountability? If you took a moment, you could probably come up with a number of different words that mean accountability. And if you look at those words, some of them may even be contradictory to each other. If you start adding emotions to those words, things can get really confusing. What results-based accountability tries to do is to provide clarity around these words and a common language for everybody to speak. Mark Friedman created the results-based accountability framework and codified it in his book, Trying Hard is Not Good Enough. He noticed that the private sector had things like profit or stock prices to help indicate how good a job they were doing, and he wanted to do the same for the public sector. What he came up with was the good that we're doing for society and then how the programs are meeting that need. That's results-based accountability. Mark's main goal for results-based accountability is to not have plans that sit on shelves. He wanted action. And so he created a series of principles and values around the framework to help move from talk to action. Several programs and parts have already piloted results-based accountability. And these are some of their thoughts and feedback that they had about the process. Results-based accountability started in the United States, but it's been adopted all over the world. Results-based accountability starts in the end and then works backwards to figure out how to design programs. It looks at what power you have at where you're at and what you can do. It looks at the few as possible accountability measures, so you're not over measuring or under measuring. It looks at these to actually understand, are you doing a good job based on the data that you have available? It establishes a common language to help you communicate what you're trying to accomplish with your stakeholders, partners, and your staff. And it's an iterative process that continually evaluates your success. The Clear Impact Workshop provides a workbook with detailed templates and exercises to help you work through the ideas of the results-based accountability and as a reference for your use. The RBA process tries to create broad enough metrics for you to understand how good a job you're doing, while at the same time making sure that everybody has a shared understanding of their challenges, problems, and solutions. In RBA, accountability is broken into two ways. There's a whole population or community accountability where you're talking about the well-being of cities, states, nations, counties, large populations of people. You're looking at these in terms of those large, hairy, audacious goals out there like a sustainable environment or healthy people. The measures for this is called an indicator and indicators are things that are collected at a large scale level. So, for instance, the Department of Health may have the percentage of active adults in the community. No one individual or group or program is responsible for this measure, but you can start looking at maybe other groups that would be partnering in this, the Heart Association, the Lung Association, the uh, Healthy People, Healthy Parks 2030 initiatives that states often have, and organizations like the National Park Service where we have maybe a health and wellness in initiative, or maybe we're looking at our concession contracts that are offering healthy meal choices. Then you start looking at your individual customer or organizational performance accountability. And this is the well-being of a particular group that you can identify within your area. So for a park, that may be uh, a bunch of people that are in the park or park visitors. So in this case, the program may be the Volkswalk where you're getting people to go out and do exercise in the park. The customers are participants or walkers, and one of your performance measures is how many of your visitors, what percentage, actually participated in this program. Community-level accountability goals are often derived by completing sentences like, we want our children and youth who are, we want our communities to be, or even we want our parks to be. Once you have those community goals and that accountability, you can start looking at the indicators. And there's lots of data out there. The key is to measure this information through time. How's that indicator trending? You can then make a forecast of what that may be in the future and see if that's going in the right or wrong direction. Then you ask yourself, 
how can we change the direction of that trend? What programs or partners can we use to help make a difference? That ends up being your return on your investment or your ROI. That's some of the metrics for those community-based interdictions and prescriptions. How do you turn the curve? RVA provides a structured framework for asking specific questions on how you might influence that trend. Examples, so children are successful in school, percentage of fourth graders that at or above proficiency is a great indicator. We track it through time and we can see that there's a trend. We can predict what that trend is, but maybe we want that trend to be sharper. So what can we do to affect that? Using healthcare as an example, healthy people are the percentage of physically active adults is our indicator and this is collected nationally and so we have this data and there's an upward trend but it's not quick and we maybe like it a little bit quicker so what can we do to help change that curve all right nps example cultural resources are protected what's an indicator the percentage of cultural resources in con good condition based on fmss data and we know that we've got a backlog of stuff happening in maintenance right so What's the goal if the trend is to go along this line? What's our goal to turn that curve so we have more and more things that we know are in good condition? And this is what the facilities group is working on in the cultural resources group, but this is a really good indication of turn the curve thinking. During the RBA workshop, you would actually get a template with some of these questions. You decide what your goal is and your indicators, and then you start using templates and worksheets that are included to help you think through this process with your team. Once you spend some time figuring out what your goals and your prescriptions are, you can then start looking at prioritizing them. And there are ways that take this idea and make it into action with some criteria for prioritization. So what are some things we can do? What is going to leverage? What's the root cause? What's the story behind that curve? Is this feasible? You know, do we have time, money, or talent to make this happen? Are we the right organization to be doing it? Values, is this consistent with our organizational values and specificity? So how uh, targeted can we be with this in our local reach? So here's some examples of some folks that have used this turn the curve thinking in the NPS workshops and some of their responses. Once you've gone through your indicators and your turn the curve thinking and come up with some strategies and figured out what your partners are, the next step is actually your performance measures, your measures that help you understand how these individual specific prescriptions that you thought were gonna turn the curve are happening. And that's the next level we'll be looking at. And that's performance accountability. Performance measures look at specific individuals or programs, how they relate to that bigger picture. This is the kind of metrics that we're probably a little bit more used to and that really boil down to quantity and quality and effort and effect. And it's really three questions. How much did you do? How well did you do it? And is anyone better off? You start boiling down and focusing in on your individual programs and figuring out what those metrics are. They're going to help you understand that. Here's a specific example using interpretation as a model. So you're looking at your effort and your effect and your quality and quantity, and you're answering those questions about how much, how well, and is anyone better off? Here's an example from NOAA, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. Their goal was to improve water quality. And so they started working with wineries to develop uh, conservation for water because the wineries were using water in droughts that were draining the streams and preventing salmon from actually spawning, which was affecting the water quality. So their effort was the number of tanks that were installed, but then how many of the wineries actually use the tags. And then he started looking at the effect of the number and percentage of tributaries of flowing water and returning coho salmon.
Here's a Junior Ranger program example. Number of Junior Ranger books versus the percentage of books that were read versus the number of Rangers earning badges, maybe the percentage of increased knowledge of individual and Junior Rangers. So why are we sorting out the different types of measures for performance? Well, not all performance measures are created equal. So quantity and effort is not as important as quality and effect. However, it's way easier to collect this information that says how much than on that information and data that says what the effects are. Results-based accountability isn't just about data and numbers, though. It's also what's going on behind that. So you might think things are going great. You've got your percentage of return visitors, and suddenly there's a downturn, and that's bad. But there's always a story behind that curve. So when you compare the information you have, you want to make sure you're including reasons for why that information is there. That's a big part of RBA. So once again, you're asked to take the turn the curve thinking and apply it to performance measures now. You're asking yourself a series of targeted questions about the information that you have and the programs that you've planned out and how well you think you're doing and evaluating and replanning and moving towards action. Action plans and data is great, but it all comes into your ability to be able to sell that information and communicate. Results-based accountability helps you tell the story behind the curve, communicate ideas, set priorities, and move from talk to action, to actually being accountable for the work that we do in the public sector. By now, I hope you have a better understanding about what results-based accountability is and how it might apply to yourself, your team, or your program. If you would like to do some further learning or exploration, we will be holding a three-day workshop over 14th, 16th, and 17th via webinar for three hours a day. The instructor and facilitator is Karen Finn from Clear Impact, and we will be using a National Park Service WebEx account. If you'd like to attend, please sign up and register at the DOI Learn 2 WebEx account or contact Dominic Cardia at dominic underscore cardia at mps.gov.